So this video is about uh, 10,000 high level view on uh, storage and uh, IO protocols. So, so far we have looked at memory hierarchy in the form of CASAS and DRAM, but uh, beyond that, we also have the notion of storage and uh, in which the entire system stack comes into picture, uh, especially the operating system. So the typical differences that you will find when we talk about storage uh, compared to memory in the form of CASAS or DRAM is the access granularity. We no longer access in bytes or CAS lines and we start accessing in the granularity of kilobytes. Uh, OS comes into picture because OS is actually uh, taking care of uh, how to access data from the storage, uh, what are the protocols, right? And uh, since these are mechanical devices, the latency are actually in the milliseconds and not in nanoseconds. Uh, you must have heard about uh, SATA and then and PCI bus. And the, but the metrics of interest are more or less the same. If you want to improve latency bandwidth and uh, of course the throughput here will be the input output operations per second. So let's look at uh, the magnetic disks or the hard disk drives that, that are there in our systems. Uh, pretty uh, simple structure. Again, you will find a notion of hierarchy here also. So you will find uh, there are platters or there are, there are the circular surfaces and uh, the data is stored in uh, both, both, uh, both sides of the uh, platter. And you'll find the circles, uh, these are known as the tracks, and each track uh, contains some sectors, okay? And that, that's the atomic unit at which uh, the data gets transferred from uh, your storage device into the DRAM, let's say when you get a page fault, for example, or um, that, that's how you, uh, whenever you need, uh, let's say, get your, movie from your hard disk and then and play it in your laptop. So that's how uh, the streaming happens or uh, the access happens, right? Streaming from disk uh, into your data. So uh, these are the things that we should uh, remember that there's a notion of track, which is uh, multiple concentric circles on the two sides of uh, the platter. And uh, so the line connecting all the tracks across the surfaces, uh, it was all the surfaces is actually called as a cylinder, okay? And there is a head which is part of an arm which uh, kind of tries to read or write uh, from a particular sector, okay? So, and then and, and, uh, this kind of rotates. So, depending on where exactly your arm is, uh, you need to spend some time before the cor correct sector comes into your read-write head and then you will be able to read or write. So, uh, as I have already mentioned in the previous slide, it's a collection of uh, platters. Uh, each platter has tracks and tracks as sectors, right? And there's a movable arm uh, that kind of uh, holds the head up for each disk surface. And then and depending on what you want to do in terms of uh, you know, read or write, uh, the operations will uh, happen. So, at a high level view, uh, the way uh, you access the data or the latency to get the data from the hard disk will be, you know, to find out a particular track. And once you find out a particular track, go to a particular sector. And then uh, once you get the data, then you transfer it. So you have, uh, in total, you will have uh, time to access the track. Let's say, call it time to access the track then time to get into the sector right once you have identified the sector then time to transfer the data depending on how much you want to transfer let's say gbs of files right uh, so depending on the bandwidth here uh, it, it will take a few milliseconds so this is a combination of all the latencies that you will see the first uh, latency is actually the seek latency which is nothing but you know the time uh, that it takes to move to a correct track because uh, as you 
I've seen that there are multiple tracks in a particular surface. So uh, typically it takes around five to 12 milliseconds. Once you have entered into a particular track, uh, let's say this is the track. Now you need to find the correct sector, right? So again, there will be address mapper, uh, which will actually take care of converting the uh, address coming from the DRAM uh, into the notion of uh, tracks and sectors. So let's say these are the sectors and uh, you are actually taking time to reach a particular sector so this is the particular sector right so uh, typically it takes around uh, two uh, milliseconds it all depends on the revolution per minute how, how fast you are uh, uh, it's actually spinning and once it is done what's the transfer time depending on the bandwidth how much uh, uh, data you want to transfer that will uh, be determining your transfer time so the sum total of all these three will uh, determine your uh, disk latency, right? So there are other overheads, but more or less these three are the key. So next time when you uh, load a movie from your hard disk into, uh, or just double click uh, your movie file, uh, think about all these latency and then how they get, um, uh, how, how the data is actually coming from the hard disk and uh, you are seeing the movie. So with that, we will jump into the world of I.O. Uh, we haven't talked about it in detail in this course, but we have uh, discussed about the notion of interrupt and uh, what happens on an interrupt, what, what exactly the pipeline does, how it handles through an interrupt uh, handler, right? Uh, but apart from that, you, you'll find there are uh, multiple things that happen in our system, right? So if you have a USB port, you have uh, uh, that that can be connected to your USB you have, let's say if you want to connect your camera, if you want to connect any other accessories, right? In today's world, you will find multiple uh, uh, accessories that you want to connect to your system. So this will be a typical uh, organization keeping uh, the uh, IO devices also. So we have talked about this part. So this is actually our processor, which has the L1 CAS, L2 CAS pipeline and everything and this is actually our dim so the north bridge is actually the interface between uh, our uh, uh, processor and the dim okay connecting the memory bus and the front side bus but there are also uh, interconnect of bus which is actually connecting our uh, io device for example this is the hard disk which is connected to the south bridge there are other uh, interconnect that are connected through uh, a PCI bus uh, or there are other accessories which are connected through a PCI bus and then eventually uh, they, they are or they can access uh, other parts of the uh, entire motherboard not not a particular system now uh, through the south bridge okay so uh, this is how a motherboard looks like uh, you, you can actually see it by by dissecting your system and uh, so different places storing uh, different things. So this is where the processor, your uh, favorite Intel processor sits in. This is where the DIMM sits in, the green color DIMMs that you have discussed in the last week. And then uh, slot for your hard disk here, right? And there are multiple uh, connectors uh, that, that are there to provide additional features, right? So uh, again, a pretty high level view on the IO protocol and then how IO interacts with the processor or memory. So the way we access memory for our own program, even the IO device also access memory. Uh, and that is actually through something called a memory mapped IO, where the IO addresses are treated equivalent to the normal virtual address uh, that the program generates. And to access a particular port, uh, regular load and store instructions can be used by the processor. So it, it's kind of an illusion that your IO addresses are kind of mapped to the memory, uh, the DRAM addresses, and the CPU can just treat them uh, equally. Of course, even here also, there will be uh, translation from uh, virtual address to physical address and other stuff uh, that, that we won't uh, go into the detail. Uh, but 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 the high level picture is uh, we are treating the addresses uh, similar to the load store addresses. And then uh, how to interact with the 
I O, right? So let's say a particular I O device is uh, uh, sending uh, data through a particular I O port. For example, your keyboard or your mouse, right? So there are uh, various ways in which uh, the processor can interact. So one of the old way of doing it is polling, where the processor keeps on polling or probing a particular I O port address, uh, asking, okay, is there anything that you want to send, right? And uh, it's kind of a time consuming process because um, iteratively you kind of go and check is there anything that IO wants to send or is there anything that I can help with? And this kind of waste, uh, waste a lot of time, right? Uh, unless the IO uh, device responds with an ACK, uh, this is ju just uh, probing and checking whether uh, anything uh, need to be done. The other way of handling uh, I/O is through a programmable interrupt uh, controller. Again, this is a circuitry which buffers all the I/O requests for the processor. Okay, so instead of processor asking every time, "Okay, is there anything for me?" Uh, this guy actually keeps on uh, buffering whenever the I/O request comes, and then the processor can handle it. But again, uh, still the processor is busy while handling the I/O. So, if you uh, come back to our example that I gave uh, for, uh, let's say loading a movie from your hard disk into your uh, memory we are talking about gvs right so transferring gvs will will take so much time in the processor so irrespective of this mechanism the processor will be busy instead of that uh, modern systems they use an approach called direct memory access approach also known as the dma approach uh, where the processor need not be active throughout the io transfers so what I mean to say is, in, in the pol polling based approach or in the programmable uh, in interrupt uh, based approaches, the process still has to execute thousands of instructions to, to get uh, data, even just to get KB sub data to or from uh, memory, right? And then uh, in, during that time, the user uh, program cannot go forward because you are actually taking care of the IO, right? So a better approach is a DMA controller. So you can assume that uh, this processor is nothing but a prof and the DMA controller is nothing but the TAs, right? And the way it works is the processor or the CPU actually sets up uh, the initial uh, protocol with, with uh, the IO device uh, and then inform that to the DMA controller. For example, what is the address space? What are the address range? and uh, what is the operation to be performed? And then it delegate that operation to the DMA controller, right? So the DMA controller is now requesting transfer to the memory. So the DMA controller is uh, directly interacting with the memory, depending on whether you want to uh, uh, read or write uh, from or uh, to the, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, reading from the memory uh, for an I device or writing from an I device into the memory, right? And then uh, let's say, once the data is uh, transferred, for example, the example that I was giving uh, of the hard disk, and you get an acknowledgement uh, from, from uh, the memory that yeah, everything is done. And then finally, the DMA controller sends an interrupt to the processor saying, yeah, everything is done. Now you can uh, start your uh, 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 other uh, instructions. And then uh, I have done uh, my job, right? So in this case, the processor is actually not spending a lot of time handling the I request. So there are two modes for uh, uh, this DMA. One is called the bust mode, where the data transfer happens in one go, uh, and then, then the DMA controller becomes the master of the bus for the entire duration of the transfer of I/O from uh, or to the memory. The other approach is the cycle steering mode, where the data is transferred only when the bus is free. Uh, bus mostly deals with the bus to the memory uh, and the south bridge bus okay so with that i will stop thank you